Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Okay, it's time for the next installment of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. And today, I'm going to try to build the amplifier part. As normal, I've got all the tools that I'm going to use on the workbench. There's my various components and some strip board. And my vice and a camera lens that I look through when I need to see some of the components in really in really fine detail because some of these components are so small you can barely read the thing. I mean, the camera's not even going to focus on it, but sometimes it's difficult to read the writing on them, so that's what I do. And here's the actual schematic of the amplifier. Now, I don't know how many of you might have come across this particular circuit in your internet travels. Some of you might have seen this, some of you might not, I really don't know. As you can see, it's got connections for bridging and sound and permanent monitor, whatever the hell that is. But it states here that these components are optional, you don't need to put them in, and I'm not going to use them, so obviously they're not going to be in there. The only problem I have with this schematic is I have not been able to get hold of these output transistors. It says here for the PNP output transistor I need an MJL21193 or MJL4302. And for the PN, um, NPN output transistor, I need an MJL21194 or MJL4281, and I haven't been able to find those anywhere. So I've decided to go for the next best thing. For these two output transistors, I'm going to use a TIP2955 and a TIP3055. I don't know how closely they match these two, but hopefully it should work. Personally, I don't think there's going to be much difference anyway, so with all that in mind, I'm going to get on and build this thing. Well, I'm about to start soldering the output transistors in now. This is the 2955 and the 3055 I talked about earlier. And you might notice that I've put them in my vise. This is a very good method to use when you're soldering in transistors because you don't want them to get damaged by the heat. So the vise acts as a kind of a heat sink. And I'm just putting them in. Right, well, I've put everything else in. I ain't sold nothing down because I want to test this. I want to go over it with a fine tooth comb and make sure everything's good. Now I'll sold it all and pop some speakers with it. What you say? Should we do that? Alright, I'm not going to talk like photonic induction no more. Anyway, like I was saying, I've put everything else in as you can see. But I haven't soldered anything in because I want to make sure that everything is connected up to what it's supposed to be connected up to. As you can see, I've crammed a whole bunch of stuff in there, so there's a lot to test. If you're wondering why this side is left blank, because I want to put the other amplifier in there, hopefully there's enough space. But what I'm going to do is have a really good look at this, and I'm going to make a second schematic of this, and I'm going to compare that to the original, and if it all matches up and everything goes where it's supposed to go, I'll solder this all in and test it. Well, here's the schematic I've drawn from what I could see on this thing that I made. And I've compared this to the original schematic and everything looks good. Nothing seems to be out of place. I've just got to clip all these wires here, as you can see. Whole bunch of stuff sticking out there, so I've got to clip all that off. Solder it, and then we can test it. We're very near the stage where we can test this thing now. Got everything soldered on. I did find one capacitor out of place, but that's been taken care of. As you can see, I've got it screwed onto this aluminium plate here, or aluminium, as some of you say. Made sure these two transistors are insulated from it so it doesn't conduct directly from one transistor to the other. But I've tried to make the heat contact as good as it can get, so soaked a bit of paper in WD-40, and that should conduct the heat, well, should do some kind of heat conduction anyway. I'm gonna turn these two meters on, I've got hooked up. As I'm going to be measuring the current going through it with the meters. I have it hooked up to my homemade power supply. Now I'm going to turn the thing on and see what's on the meters. And if it's some insanely high current, I'm going to turn it off right away. Okay, right. We have about one milliamp going through this one. And almost nothing going through this one. So I'm going to increase the voltage until it gets to about 20 volts. 
while at the same time observing the meters. Okay, we've got about 5 milliamps going through it. The voltage drop LED is glowing, so I've got about 40 volts total going through there. And a lot less current than I thought there would be. I thought we'd, get, we'd have at least thought we'd have at least a hundred milliamps going through there, so I don't exactly know what's going on. This meter is, desperately needs a new battery, but at least it's miss, still measuring the current. Anyway, I'm going to see if I can hook up a speaker to this and see if it actually does anything. I've got it hooked up to this little speaker now, and it is showing signs of life. It does seem to be doing something. When I put the speaker right up to my ear, I could hear a faint hiss come from it, so that's always a good sign when you're working with these kind of things. And if I touch the input, I do get a buzz. Now, I know this isn't the most sensitive of amplifiers, but that's a good sign. So I'll try to connect this up to an input and see if it does amplify an input signal. One thing that is bothering me is this extremely low quiescent current that should be somewhere up around 100 milliamps and as you can see we've only got five I'm not sure why it's doing that but i'm sure it will be revealed right well i'm about to test this with an audio signal now i have this amplifier that i've hooked up i mean built hooked up to the cassette deck i'm having to use the reel to reel to record the sound this time because I'm not obviously not going to be able to use this to record the sound because I'm going to be using it to play back. And yeah, my voice is coming through this cassette deck as well. And yep, yeah, that's coming through. I can feel the speaker vibrate every time I speak. I really need to test this thing with some music. So I'm just going to look for a tape that's got music on it. Oh, I've got some chip tunes. I've got some chip tunes on this tape. Let's see what's on it. That seems to work pretty good. Don't want to put that on too loud because it's quite loud at night, but that was really making that speaker go. Well, I've solved the mystery of the quiescent current. As it turns out, I just forgotten to set this little variable resistor right there. Now, as you can see on the meter, it's about 50 milliamps. I had it cut, hooked up to this speaker here. I was playing some music from the reel to reel. Absolutely amazing, the sound quality of this thing. I mean, I thought these speakers sounded good before when I had them connected up to those little LM383s that I've got, but this... It's a completely different story. Anyway, that's just about it from Cool Dude Clemens Electronic Workshop. If you want to see the previous video, click on the box on the right as normal. And if you want to go to my channel, you know the drill. Click on what there's, what's ever in this little box here. And that's it for now, so until next time, goodbye.